Contact! Ha 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 ha! Well, there's no check engine light. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you could be here. This is Hey Ray with HR Repair. And we have a 1.6 liter EcoBoost that is really um, probably possibly got one of the dumbest designs for timing that I've ever known. So we're going to dive into this. We're going to, I've, I've got it started tearing it down. I wasn't going to make a video on it. I did make a little YouTube short because, you know, we've got a water pump that's bad. And I thought, originally I thought, that it was just needing the water pump, we might be able to slide it out from behind the timing belt. Further research in Identifix shows no, that is not an option. So stay tuned and we'll sh walk you through this on how to remove and replace the water pump timing belt and retime this. It will take special tools, which I've got here. So yeah, stay tuned. Contact. So on this thing, um, I've taken everything apart. So basically you want to remove this hose up here on the top of the engine. Um, I've removed the intake already. Um, they call it the turbocharger inlet pipe, but it's, I mean, it's technically the intake. They want you to loosen the water pump bolts first, which I already did. Um, and the reason for that is you can loosen them while the belt's on it'll help hold the pulley so it doesn't spin. Uh, then you want to remove your right front tire. As you can see, we've done that. We've pulled the splash shield out of the way. We've also removed the splash shield underneath here, or what's left of it. It was pretty tore up. Now, we've also removed the starter. Um, we have not removed the alternator as of yet. Uh, they want you to remove the engine mount, which I have done. I've also removed uh, this front tensioner. And then they want you to remove this so you can pop this out of the way and uh, get this thing popped off of here. So then we get to this point here where we want to get this wire out of the way and remove all of our front cover bolts. We have to remove this one stud so we can get access to this and get that pulled off. So that's where we're at right now. We're going to get all those removed. Uh, I'll get this thing unplugged and we'll get to, get to working on this. So get this all unplugged here. I want to be able to move that thing clean out of the way instead of just pulling it to the side. I want it out of my way. So we'll unhook that. And then we'll get started taking all of this off. All right, so I'm gonna have to work around some of this stuff here. But as you can see, I've already removed a lot of this stuff up top here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and remove the alternator here. And I think we'll have to actually move this thing over and hold it up from the back here. They make a lifting eye for to bolt in back here, I believe. I don't have that. I thought it might come in the kit, but it didn't come in the kit. So we'll have to maybe fabricate something or something. We'll figure something out. But uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead right away and just pull this harness off of here. Get me some more light on the subject. Let's get this thing popped loose from the cover. Mafti Lois. Seriously? There we go. Yeah, it broke. Alright. No worries, I've got more. Let's kind of set that back and out of the way. This kind of out of the way. Then we want to take that loose. That's an inverted Torx. It's loose. Alright, let's get my cordless ratchet. down here with everything else. There we go. That's 
seems loose. There's one ear down here is not wanting to come loose. There we go. That's loose. Now that one fell down. So now we're down to the part where we can turn this thing, I believe. We're actually, we're gonna wanna remove the alternator. I about forgot about that. All right, so let's remove the alternator. There we go. <clears throat> well, I know we have to get this bracket off here. So in order to do that, we're they want you to put a lifting jack on the bottom of the motor, hold it up, and then move this back to here where we'll bolt on another lifting eye. Now I think I've got one here, so I'm gonna do that. And then we'll get back. Um, once I get that set up, uh, I'll be back. Took some finagling, but we got it in. It's held up by this hoist here. We've uh, taken all of this off. If you remember, those trim pieces there were over here and over there. So now we're setting on there. Everything is solid. Um, nothing's moving anywhere. So now we're ready to go back up with this thing. Uh, we've also got the cams in the 11 o'clock position. So if you see, there's a mark right there. Here, let's get my, and you'll see we've got a mark right, right there. There's a mark. And there is a mark. Those are both at the 11 o'clock position. And therefore, we should be ready to place our locking pin back here on the back side of the motor. So for that, we're gonna need to go up. So always turn the engine clockwise. You don't wanna turn it counterclockwise. So if you go past, just keep going, make another round. Um, so now, they want us to remove the nuts on the half shaft bracket and discard. Um, discard the half shaft bracket. They want to put a new bracket on there. So uh, now uh, we're going to go over to here because I've already... Now we will want to remove the bolts and position the bracket aside. So I've already loosened this and moved it to the side. We can now remove this bl plug bolt on the back side. Then we'll need to install the special service tool, which is 303-748, the locking tool, crankshaft locking tool. And it's that little plug that goes in there. So let's get that one out. I believe I'm gonna have to look, but I believe it's gonna be this one right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna send everything flying here. <laughs> Good job. All right. I believe it's gonna be this one here, but I'll look that up for sure. Okay, so the bolt that we're looking to take out is this one right up here. And that is squarely behind this bracket that's supposed to be over here. Um, actually, if I could, maybe you guys can see a little better if I bring you up here. But this bracket actually moves over and is in behind this bearing. So that bracket needs to be moved to the side. Now, I think I can get a 10 mil wrench socket and get that thing removed from there. So let's try that. I'm going to try and get you guys as good a views as possible here. Okay, come out. Don't want to get that thing stuck in behind there. So let's get this bolt unthreaded from here. Okay, so basically that's just a, a plug that comes out of there. So what we're going to have is our crankshaft should, in theory, come up against there. All right, so this is the 303-748. It's the one with the most threads. And we're going to bring this thing up in here. We're going to thread 
that in there if at all possible i mean it's like literally almost there are you serious okay i don't want to have to take this whole axle shaft out here there we go all right so we'll thread this in there all the way against till it bottoms out okay now that's in there now what we need to do is we have to get that crankshaft turned over until it comes up against and then our cams up top should be at the 12 o'clock position so let's go ahead and turn that okay i'm gonna have to probably okay so let's try this like i said this thing shouldn't turn over very hard right now so all right it's now against now what we need to do is lock that engine in place or the crankshaft in place and this is where things get kind of interesting because from here on out we have a potential to get this thing out of time and that's not what we want so all right so we've rotate the crankshaft slowly clockwise until the crankshaft balance weight is up against the crankshaft locking tool the engine is now at tdc so this is what it looks like on the inside this is your crankshaft weight coming up and we've locked it in place so it can no longer move this way however it can still turn counterclockwise we don't want it to do that so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this this is our locking tool for the uh, starter this goes where we pulled the starter out which i did that off camera um, i've already had that out and i gotta figure out which one of these is the one that i need so I'll get that figured out my bolt is in underneath here so let's put that back here all right so now we'll get the i think it's going to be this one but i don't know for sure so i'll get that we'll be back and i'll get that thing set in there i'll bring you back whenever we go to put that in all right so we have got our locking pin set up here hope you guys can see that against the glare of the light there but it's almost impossible to see without it um so it's the long the one i had to use was the longest one of these things here so that's now keeping the crankshaft up against this bolt here and that's now locked the crankshaft in position so in theory we should be able i think to lock our cams and then we'd be able to or be ready to take this thing loose so let's see if we can if we've got everything right here we'll let this thing down and get into the cams see if we can lock the cams so there is a procedure for removing this water pump without the uh removing the time or the yeah the timing belt but in my opinion if you're down in this far anyway you should replace the timing belt while you're there so since we're there let's do it customer would agree as well now i can see that our timing marks are at the 12 o'clock position so that tells me that we're in the right position. All right. So now we, we have everything locked into place. Okay, now we'll come in and our, into our little words. We'll get into our instructions here. And now we want to remove our crankshaft pulley bolt. Okay, and then we can uh, loosen the belt tensioner. And so there's a little clip that goes in there. 
once you get that thing spring loaded back whatever reload the spring you can put that pin in there so let's get all that done like i said the uh, engine is up a little high so we're gonna have to lower it so we can get to our front crank pulley bolt and also we're gonna have to use a special tool to remove the front pulley there so let's get see if we can get our um front pulley loose there i'm just not gonna raise this thing up we're just gonna see eh, maybe we'd better might need to lower this thing down a little bit more all right so we got our bolt out now this is a stretch bolt so this one goes in the trash. Now we've got our pulley puller here. You know, I'm gonna go up with this thing. I don't know why I've still got it down in this level. Well, this sucks. This puller is not the right puller for the job. It does not fit inside that pulley. So I'm going to have to come up with something to pull that thing out of there. So hang out here until I get back. Okay, well, we adapted and we overcame. We've had to modify this thing just a little bit, but it should fit in here now with a little bit of persuasion. And hopefully we can pull that thing out of there. So let's get that in there and we shall hopefully be able to remove this thing. If not, I'm not gonna be very happy. So let's hope Hope and pray that it goes. Okay, so if it's turning like that, why can't I pull it off or pry it off? Okay. <laughs> I did all that work for nothing. Uh, it just came off by hand. I was... According to the instructions, it said to uh, be able to just remove it. It didn't say anything about using a puller. I assumed that I needed a puller. Well, I didn't need a puller. All right. So let's go back down and then we'll start taking that timing belt off of there. All right. I'm going to try to get you guys over here where you guys can see better now we just go with the instructions here so we for sure don't get mixed up okay we've got yep all right we've got all that we're ready for step number 28 rotate the timing belt tensioner and hold install a holding pin remove the timing belt okay now i guess i'm not 100 percent sure what the proper way is to rotate the belt tensioner here um oh just like that i figured there was that kind of hurts just pulling up there we go Whoo! that hurts okay ow pulled up on that little tab there that's kind of hard on the fingers okay now we should be able to remove said timing belt well let's see if we can remove the tensioner first i'll say that's a t something <laughs> it's gonna be a t35 no t40 come up there we go all right this is this is the uh piece that i was pulling up on a while ago and about uh, ended the life of my finger there so yep set that aside now we should be able to pull this right off of here and yep the bottom pulley does come off we'll just take it off since we need to clean the daylights out of this thing anyway now let's get a catch pan underneath there because we're going to lose some antifreeze when that thing comes off of there where's my catch pan here's my catch pan there 
And I caught about 5% of the antifreeze. At least that's 5% that didn't go on the floor. All of that work for that thing right there. Now, we're going to clean everything and then we're gonna go back together. So let me get this cleaned up and I'll bring you guys back. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and put the water pump on off camera and then we'll get the, when we get ready to put the timing belt back on and, and make sure everything's timed and all that good stuff. I'll bring you guys back. We have got the water pump installed. And now we're going to get to work on the... Here, let's get you guys situated here where you can see and I can work. So we're going to get our timing belt uh, installed. Now this here, you're going to want to... Uh, this, this pulley down here can turn. So what we want is we want this to kind of pull up against here. This needs to be tight. And one of the benefits to having that pulley loose down there is that it turns on the shaft. But we also want this, this one here to spin just a little bit, I think. Or is it the other, the other way? But these things have to, come on here because there's a little bit of play in this tool. We're gonna need to get this thing. There we go, just like that. So now, yep, so now that's good. I just did all that work and I left the tensioner behind me. Can I reach it? Because if I let go, come please, come please. Come here, thank you. All right, got it. All right, so now let's go ahead and keep this on here. And this needs to go, I believe, like this maybe. Come on, yeah, there's a little notch this goes into. I'll try to show you guys that here just pretty soon. All right, so right behind there, can you see that maybe? See if I can get focus. See that little tab there? I think you'll see that whenever you, you guys should be able to see that whenever you get uh, yours installed. So now we can tighten this down. Okay, all right. So now this is in and as you'll see, that's loose. So I think we want to release that before we put the front pulley on, but we may want to first torque that down. All right, so this thing literally does not have a torque spec in the directions for this uh, bolt here. So we're just going to go with a wrist click. Torque to factory spec. Now we pull the pin here. Pull the pin. Loading. All right. So now, as we can tell, this is all in here now. That's tight. This is tight. This is tight. These are tight. We're still, we still got our tool in here. This comes in and out easily. Now, we do not want to take this tool out because it could still go out of time with the bottom crank. That it would be unceremonious. So we've discharged the tensioner. Remove the holding pin, we did that. Now we want to install the crankshaft pulley. Actually, we're gonna need to take our crankshaft position sensor out of there. I think I was supposed to do that on the disassembly and I forgot it, I missed that step. So let's get that out of there because we've got a special tool to go in behind there. So now we will want to put our front pulley on. That should just slide down across there without an issue. Wanna make sure that Mounting surface there is all clean. Okay. Now, our new bolt. This is a brand new bolt from Ford. Uh, they don't have the part number here. Okay. Part number BE8Z6A340. 
A. So they've got it covered up. What I was trying to say a while ago is they got it covered up with this. Okay, so we're ready to install this. I think this goes on there just hand tight for now. Um, let's look at our instructions over here. This is the special tool. OEM number is 303-1550. And we're going to shove this in behind the crankshaft pulley and this goes where the crankshaft position sensor was mounted originally. Let's see if we can go ahead and get this thing in there, please. Thank you. All right, so in order, so the reason that this special tool has to be down in here, this one here, this aligns your front pulley because our timing sensor, crankshaft position sensor, is going to be timed off of the front pulley here. So uh, here, I'll just show you guys what this thing's got on the back side here. This is gonna be a magnetic ring, which I need to make sure that all the crap is off of there. But this is gonna be a magnetic ring, and this tells the computer where the crankshaft is in position. So this has to be timed with the engine as well. Now you'll see that groove right there, that hole right there, that is what needs to lock into that special tool there. So let's go get that thing right there. Now that should go in against there tight. All right, so now that is there. If you don't do that, you will probably have an engine that either one doesn't start two has low power or it may be hard starting now some of these will revert to the camshaft position sensor and still try to run but some of the stuff on some of these it will actually run off of the crankshaft position sensor and if it loses the crankshaft position sensor it won't run so this is a very very critical part of it as well you gotta make sure that you time this thing correctly so don't just think that this front pulley can go in any which direction that it wants because that is a timed pulley as well so we're gonna hand tighten this and then we'll get out our torque wrench tighten the crankshaft pulley bolt so it's got to be locked in as we see there tighten the crankshaft pulley bolt first round first stage is going to be 74 foot pounds 90 degrees and then wait two seconds i don't know why you have to wait two seconds only i don't know what happens if you wait much longer than that or do it quicker than that but i mean whatever we'll do it um so 74 foot pounds 90 degrees wait two seconds then an additional 15 degrees so let's get at it 74 foot pounds all right. Now, that's 74. The biggest thing is I do not have another, I don't have a half inch drive that'll do the torque turn method. So we're going to go and get ourselves a long extension, go in there. We're gonna use a half inch drive and we'll do 90 and then an additional 15 degrees. Okay, so 90 degrees is gonna be straight down. So. That's 90. That's another 15. Yep, that's, that's 45 and, or 90 and 15. Right there, on the money, guaranteed. Just like the factory ordered. Whew, all right, we're good. That's good, that's tight. What's the next step? Remove the special tool. All right, so let's get an eight mil. Okay, can we, can we go ahead and come out of there please? I know you guys can't see the thing, but come on, please. That's out of there. I think they want us to 
put the uh, sensor back in there, I think, maybe. Remove special service tool. Ah, no, they want us to remove our locking tools now because then they want us to check everything after one and three quarter turns. They want us to check everything, make sure everything will line back up. So in theory, if we did this correctly, everything should line back up. Let's see if I can get this one out of here. All right, so let's get our locking mechanism out for the starter. And for that, we're gonna need to go up. So we'll go up and I'm gonna get that all out of there and then I'll be back. Okay, we've got all of our timing tools removed. We're gonna go one and three quarter rounds. So what we're doing now is we're testing to see if everything lines back up again. Something's got compression. Haven't felt anything hit yet. We're coming up on almost one and a half rounds. We are at one and three quarter rounds. Now, I believe they want us to put this thing back in. Yep, so this thing's gotta go back in here. Okay, now we're gonna go up against. Okay, now by us coming up against, we should be able to lock this and we can. So it is in time and technically we should be able to, we should be able to put that other special tool on the back side there, but I know we can because everything else goes in there. So we're good. This thing is in time. That's a success. So let's go ahead and remove this special tool out from behind here. This engine is retimed. Now that was the difficult part of this job. So we should be good to continue reassembly of this engine. And I will do that off camera um, because I don't want to bore you guys with everything. Once I get done putting everything back together, the first start will be on camera. You guys can watch and find out at the same time that I do. So I will be back. Don't go anywhere. All right, everything's back together now. It is time to see if we have actually accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. See what happens. Oh, hey. Hey, shut off. Contact! <laughs> um, well, there's no check engine light. She runs smoothly. How about we check it for leaks? So far, so good. Yeah! All right. Well, we've got this thing back together. As you could see, and we're out on the road, taking it for a test drive. We're going to go around the section, get it warmed up, make sure that all is well, no check engine light comes on or anything crazy like that. Uh, I don't think it was on before, so shouldn't come on now. Also, uh, it is dark outside, as you guys can see. It is 8.23 at night on a Friday night. Uh, we're burning the late night oil on this one, but uh, this one has taken me a while and it's hard for me. I'm in the shop by myself today and so it's hard for me to get anything done between people stopping in, phone calls, and trying to get something done. It's been kind of difficult, so. But we got it got it back together customer should be able to pick this thing up tonight as long as nothing comes up so uh, it runs really well it seems to have good power uh, there's no codes that are coming up as of yet so we're going to assume that all is well there but let's go ahead and continue the drive 
but uh yeah um i hope you guys found this information helpful to you i know that um there's probably some other videos out there on how to do this i don't know for sure but i'm sure there is uh but i thought well you guys might find it interesting to watch one of mine so um I do want to thank you all for sharing my videos, for liking and subscribing to the channel. We're up over a thousand subscribers. Yoo hoo! Yay! Go! Uh, appreciate it. And also want to thank you for being here. Most of all, I want everyone to have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you guys anything, and it helps me out tremendously. Until the next time, I'll catch you all later. See you all later. Bye!